Uh, so real quick before I head out to the water, I just want to show you the cooler that I normally would carry with me, and I'm not going to carry with me today because I'm actually only going to be out for a few hours to catch bait for tomorrow. But this is what I would normally carry. It's just a cheap $20 Rubbermaid cooler. I think it's a 68 quart. This is what I normally carry if I'm freshwater fishing. I don't really keep a whole lot of freshwater fish. If I'm saltwater fishing, I will carry that uh, Blue Coleman cooler because I, I do keep a wide variety of uh, freshwater, or excuse me, saltwater fish. And excuse the mess, I have freaking crab pots and crap, it's just everywhere. But I just want to show you, uh, this is the grill that I use. It is a Coleman bucket grill. And it will actually fit right down there in the cooler. Got your cooking grate. I normally preload it with charcoal. Charcoal is actually in my truck. But uh, right here I can just put drinks, ice, um, and of course the food. And I would normally put the package of hamburger buns or hot dog buns right on top of the charcoal so the bread does not get soggy by sitting down the ice. So that's what I would normally do if I'm going to be out all day. But since I'm not going to be out all day, and this is actually two buckets, which I'll get to once I get out on the water, you can actually uh, stick it right in here in this front compartment of my Hobie Pro Angler 14. And you can see I got some other crap in there, a beanie, gloves, a pretty big life jacket, and it just sits right down in there. You can shut the lid, no problem. It uh, doesn't hit, has no issue shutting, and that's what I'm going to be doing today. So the first thing I do is I get this mat, and this is a, uh, it's made for like lining toolboxes so your tools don't slide around, and it's also made for kitchen cabinets, but you can pretty much find it at any hardware store. It's just a non-slip mat just so this grill doesn't slide off the lid right there. The first thing I do is put the mat down and what I will do is go ahead and bungee it right on the lid. Alright, so here's the grill itself. Now, the cooking grate, I will say that um, this thing is held up very, very good. I'm, I'm actually pretty impressed. This thing, I was fully expecting to rust and just crap out within a month or two, but I've actually been doing this for about a year now. So, um, you know, as soon as I get home, I clean it, and then I'll just throw it right in the dishwasher right afterwards. So that's probably why it's been holding up. So... Now the reason for the two buckets. So you just don't want to set the grill right on your kayak and start grilling because the bottom of this will get probably hot enough to warp the plastic. So you're going to want to have something to put it in or on. You know, just something to give you an air gap. And that's basically why I bought two of these. And when I'm holding this, you know, when this thing has been going 5-10 minutes, or however long, it doesn't matter, I can actually pick it up like this, and you're about to see it. And it's going to be like a really nice hand warmer, right here on the sides where my thumb is moving. If I put my hand at the bottom, there's a um, noticeable heat difference. It's actually a whole lot cooler on the bottom and it's probably about as warm as an electric blanket on the lowest setting and it's probably even not that warm it's probably cooler than that so um, I just put it right up there and I'll go ahead and light this stuff up and I just use Kingsford's match light charcoal I don't bring I don't bring any lighter fluid or anything like that I just keep it simple all right so while that's going I'll just tell you about the only incident that I ever had actually doing this and um, I was that if you actually go out here and you make a right which is the main river um, there's a huge lake 
off that way and it's about a few miles away from here but me and a friend of mine were in a pretty big lake and we were kind of like in a little bay area where it kind of cut into the woods and it was a deep channel right through there and we were planning on catfishing throughout the night and the sun was just starting to go down and this bass boat rides by passes us in the bay and um, we heard him yell something didn't really pay no attention to it next thing you know they're turning around coming flying into the bay one of them is on the front of it front of the boat with a fire extinguisher in his hand I stand up and I'm like waving at him tell him to stop you know I'm I'm cooking food what is he doing and then the wake of the boat is coming towards my kayak and I have to kneel down and um, you know I just basically picked up my grill because my spatula was uh, right beside me so I just picked up the grill which uh, I mean you can see it's it's been going for a little bit now and you know it's 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 warm but it's not it's not hot let's put it that way so yeah I just uh, picked up the grill now this bucket inside right here like just by tapping my thumb that's really hot that's really really hot but this right here is, is completely fine so uh yeah I just picked up my grill and um you know we all had a good laugh and don't get me wrong I appreciate the concern but I mean how often do you see a kayak on fire <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen it or heard about it so yeah that's really the only incident that I've ever had doing this and um you know just like I said with that bass boat who came by and if another boat rides by you and creates a, a wake or whatever all you do is you just lean forward and normally I have a spatula or a fork out and I'll just simply press down on the grill until the wake of the other boat goes by which only takes a few seconds so that's how I that's how I handle that all right fire finally went out I'll go ahead and throw my cooking grate on there and the, the smoke will eventually stop you kind of have to point your kayak in a direction that is out of the smoke which it's blowing right towards me you know you could easily cook five or six on here um, dependent on the size of your hot dogs but it's definitely plenty of and if you were doing hamburgers you know you could probably depending on the size of your hamburger um, I've only cooked two but you probably could get away with cooking three you know again depending on the size of them because they will they will shrink up a little bit as you cook them so just to keep that in mind all right it's finally stopped smoking for the most part that's just uh, grease falling down from the hot dogs but there you go you know the sides here from this ridge line up to here it's like a really nice hand warmer and at the bottom of the bucket it is not hot at all it's I mean it's warm but it's like an electric blanket so yeah it's not hot at all and right here I can't I can't really tell the difference so so yeah there you go and like I said normally I uh, I have a wet towel under this which is always a good idea so you know if you do decide to do something like this make sure you have a wet towel on top of this and you fold it over a few times you know just just in case don't don't uh, don't burn your stuff is the point and just to show you real quick I mean you can see that I'm rocking this thing pretty good and you know if that non-slip mat wasn't there that grill would be in the water right now so uh, so there you go and my hot dogs are just about done so on that note thanks for watching and any questions just leave me a comment I'll try and get back with you as soon as I can and I will see you guys on the next one